We want to take you live to the Miami-Dade Emergency Operations it's Center in Doral for an update on the Champlain Tower South condo building. I'm Let's listen in to, to Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Livingtava. The of the remaining portion of the Champlain Tower South was executed exactly as planned. The demolition began at 10.30 p.m. and the building fell as was planned towards Collins Avenue. Only dust landed on the existing pile. And a little over an hour afterward, we received the all clear. And then right around midnight, work commenced on the pile and by 1 a.m. we were in full search and rescue operation mode. To collapse an entire apartment building is a devastating decision and the demolition was in no way a decision that I made lightly. Bringing the building down in a controlled manner was critical to expanding our scope of search. Truly, we could not continue without bringing this building down. The area closest to the building was the area that we had not been able to access, and that is where we, we needed to go. And uh, previously, it was not accessible due to the enormous risk to the team of first responders because of the instability of the building. And as we speak, the teams are working on that part of the pile that was not accessible before the building was demolished. <clears throat> the standing structure also posed a threat to public health and safety, particularly as the storm approached, given that the tropical storm force winds could have brought it down in a manner that could not have been as controlled and predicted. So I am extraordinarily grateful to the demolition team, the engineers, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Team, the Miami-Dade County Police Department, and everyone who played an integral part in executing this operation safely and successfully, including the town of Surfside. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge and reflect on the great tragedy that this has been for those who've survived the building and have had to evacuate. The world is mourning for those who lost their loved ones and for those who are waiting for news from the collapse. To lose your home and all your belongings in this manner is a great loss as well. And my heart and deepest sympathies goes out to all of the families who have had this tragedy. Our, fam our, our teams are doing everything possible to help those who lost their homes begin to rebuild. FEMA is here and has been from the beginning and they've been doing an incredible job to sign up families for individual assistance. And we're working with insurance companies to streamline the process of submitting claims as much as possible. And we've raised millions of dollars thanks to the generosity of people in this country and all around the world. Their generosity has been overwhelming and it is going to be very, very important to put these funds into these families' hands to help them to rebuild and meet their unmet needs and they have already been getting this assistance. I also want to stress once again that we took every action that we possibly could to search for any pets, any animals in the building prior to the demolition. In the days since the collapse, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Team conducted multiple full sweeps of the building in person, including searching in closets and under beds and other hiding places. In the areas of the building that were not accessible to the teams, they used ladders on high lift cranes and they placed live animal traps on the balconies at great personal risk to our first responders. Also, doorways were opened, other means for the pets to escape the building if they were able. <clears throat> we deployed drones with thermal imaging on numerous trips over the rubble pile and also standing in the tower in areas unsafe uh, for search and rescue teams to enter. So I want to say as clearly as I possibly can and urge our community to understand that we went truly to great lengths to take every step that we could at great risk to our first responders to ensure that all of the pets that were beloved family members, that none of them were left in the building prior to the demolition. 
Since the first responders were able to resume their work on the collapse last night, we have very sadly recovered three additional victims. The total number of confirmed deaths is now at 27. The number of those accounted for is 191 and unaccounted for 118. Please join me in praying for those who lost their lives, the families who mourn, and for all of those who are still waiting. We continue to monitor Tropical Storm Elsa and expect that Miami-Dade will mostly experience heavy rain and some winds throughout today and tomorrow. I was grateful to have the opportunity to speak with some of the first responders on site last night, right after the demolition, before they headed back out to the pile. On day 12, these men and women have continued their mission. They have the same determination and strength as when they got out on day one. It is a true honor to serve alongside these heroes and sheroes from the state, from the federal, and from the international teams, all of our partners who've made this historic effort possible. Me enorgullece ofrecer una actualización de que la demolición de anoche de Champlain Tower Sur we are now listening to Miami-Dade Mayor Daniel Levine Cava briefing us on the latest search and rescue operations out of Surfside. They are now at the Emergency Operations Center here in Doral because they're also keeping a very close, close eye on Tropical Storm Elsa. The mayor started off by saying that the demolition went exactly as planned. The building came down at 10.30 last night, and by midnight and by 1 a.m., the rescue crews were out there again in full operation mode. Yeah, and she said since those search and rescue efforts continued, they were sadly able to recover three bodies. So now the death toll has gone up to 27. The unaccounted for has gone down to 118 as a result of those new bodies recovered. And the mayor was saying that it was so important for them to demolish the building. So the first responders were able to go into areas of the building that they were unable to reach. And that's when they said that last night, unfortunately, they recovered three additional uh, victims from, from that rubble. She said also the importance of bringing down the building also for uh, the, the, the safety of mm -hmm. these first responders. And now with Tropical Storm Elsa possibly moving in, that could have been extremely uh, dangerous for them. Yeah, they wanted to keep it controlled, so it went down the way that they could uh, keep an eye on it, of course. Uh, something else, too, she talked about, of course, this now means homes for so many people, mm -hmm. all these memories now gone. You know, she mentioned, obviously, of course, it is a horrible thing that these families are going through as they get news of their loved ones or as they're still waiting. But she asked that we also think about the people who've lost their homes. She did mention the millions of dollars raised from the generosity of people all around the world. And she did say that that money is already being used to assist those families who have lost their homes. And another topic she's been touching on, uh, a topic that a lot of people really care about. I've been getting a lot of messages of people asking about people's pets in the building. She did address that. She said they took every action possible to search for any animals still in the building prior to the demolition, that they did a full sweep, that they looked at all the hiding places from closets to under the beds, even putting uh, animal traps on balconies, using ladders to get those cranes up. Of course, mentioning too all of this at great personal risk to those first responders. Yeah, they said that the doors were left open. Um, they used drones with thermal imaging to see if they can see um, any pets. They said they, the, the rescue crews went to great lengths, putting their own lives at risk to find the pets. And they wanted to make sure that the, no pets were left behind when the demolition occurred, which again happened at 10:30 last night. She said um, the the the, ta the, the remaining tower actually fell towards Collins Avenue. And it was only dust what landed on the existing pile, which, yeah. is, which is what they wanted. Yeah, and we saw the video, of course, from all different perspectives, you know, and I think pets is one of those things mm -hmm. that really came up a few days in. Uh, it wasn't something that initially was thought about, but as we talk about how multi-layered and how complicated this horrible tragedy is and the search and rescue efforts are, that definitely was a huge area of concern. And I, this is the first time I'm seeing her mm -hmm 
address it to this capacity. But as we know, a lot of people had a lot of concern about that, and there were efforts to reunite those lost pets or the pets that maybe got out with their owners as well. She said they, they really did all they could to try to find some of the pets that were left behind. And uh, go, going back to the demolition, and the reason why they were saying it was so important is because there were a lot of areas within the rubble that were so close to the existing tower, the remaining tower, they were not able to get to that, um, to get to those areas. And now with the building down, they could get to those areas yeah. where they weren't able to search. And 11 days, they days went before. 11 days only really searching that one pile of rubble mm -hmm. that we had all seen. And now you can see this is a different image than what we've been seeing before as search and rescue you, efforts Mayor. continue. Vice Chair for the Board of now it sounds like we are hearing from Oliver. the next speaker. Let's listen in to Oliver Gilbert. Good morning, I don't have much to add. Uh, Gordon, what the mayor said, first I would just like to thank her for her leadership and, and her strength in this. Um, it's important because when you become, when you get elected mayor, you don't think that this is going to happen. We don't prepare for stuff like this. And so watching her serve and lead through this has been truly, it's been my honor to serve and lead with her, with her because, because that's, that's what leadership is. It's getting something that's unanticipated and doing the very best you can and bringing people together while you do it. Look, 12 days ago, I think I stood in front of a microphone and I said that we're going to work, we're going to pray, and we're going to get through this together. And that's what we're doing. We're praying, we're working, and we're getting through this together. That, that takes different forms. Last night, the building came down, so that allows us to expand our search. That, that's, that's the work that has to take place. You know, as we, as we move forward in this process, I just want everybody not to forget the praying part. Because we're still play, praying to, to possibly find survivors. We're, we're praying for peace and answers for the family, and we're praying that we can find the, the information. We can figure out exactly why this happened. Because th this, this is this side of the microphone, and I'm sure that all of them would agree, is th the worst place in the world in a situation like this. You don't ever want to be delivering bad news to a community because it's not just those families that are hurt. It's the entire community. The weight of that building coming down, those buildings coming down, is on this entire community. And, and it's been a long ride for us. Look, it's not lost on me that we celebrated the 4th of July yesterday. And we didn't actually celebrate, not like we do. But last year, we didn't actually celebrate like we do either because of COVID. And, and so it seems like we've been this, in this kind of malaise for a while as a community. My commitment, her commitment, our commitment is that we're going to pray and we're going to get through this and come out of this together. I, I know that we can do that. I know that we will do that. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Okay, so you were just listening in to Vice Chairman Oliver Gilbert just kind of adding to what the mayor was saying, talking about the importance of prayer still. Now that this other part of the building has been demolished and has come down and they're able to search different areas, he still, like many, hoping for a miracle here, praying for survivors. Also touching on the timeliness of it all, yesterday was 4th of July. We, of course, didn't get celebrations last year because of COVID. And then all throughout Miami-Dade County, a lot of celebrations also canceled out of respect, of course, for those people impacted. Yeah, just heartbreaking. And just to recap what the mayor said, the death toll is now at 27, 191 people are accounted for and 118 remain unaccounted for. And now that the building has come down, the demolition, she said, went perfectly. Now, first responders will not be able to expand their search.